This program is intended to assist in training the operator of Hobart equipment and is a supplement to the instruction manual. The instruction manual provided with your machine has ML numbers printed on the cover. Be sure the ML number agrees with the number stamped on the data plate on the machine. For more information, always refer to the instruction manual. Replacement manuals can be obtained from your local Hobart office. In the next few minutes, you will learn FT-800 operating procedures, including how to set up and operate the FT-800, proper loading and unloading procedures, equipment shutdown and cleaning, and minor maintenance procedures. Washing dishes in a flight-type wear washer is more than a one-person job. You have to work as part of a team. Without teamwork, the whole system breaks down and limits the ability to clean your dishes properly and efficiently. Teamwork means communicating with team members to keep your dishwashing operation running smoothly. Let's begin with how the FT-800 is set up for daily operation. First, make sure all access doors are open. There are three access doors on the FT-800 and one door on the blower dryer chamber. The FT will not run if any of the access doors are open, with the exception of the blower dryer chamber door. Then install the pans and baskets in each compartment. Drain covers and strainer components are designed to keep the dishwater free from food soil and quickly return water to the wash tank. Starting with the load end, install the strainer pans, strainer baskets, and drain covers. Then moving down the length of the machine, install the strainer pans and baskets in the center section and the rinse section. It is important to align the pins on the wear washer into the holes on the strainer pans and baskets. If not aligned properly, food soil and debris may bypass the strainers. Next, install the curtains. There are four long curtains and one short curtain on the FT-800. The four long curtains are hung at the entrance, between the pre-wash and the wash zones, between the wash and the rinse zones, and at the discharge end of the machine. The short curtain is placed between the rinse and the final rinse zones. This curtain is short to ensure that all wares receive an adequate sanitizing rinse. Hang the curtains on the hooks provided inside the machine. The FT-800 is equipped with automatic drain levers. As the access doors are lowered, the drain automatically closes. The drain levers can also be closed manually by pushing the drain lever down by hand. With the access doors and drains closed, turn the machine power switch to the fill position. After a five second delay, the machine will automatically begin filling with water. Three tanks fill on the FT-800. The wash and rinse tanks fill first, then overflow to fill the pre-wash tank. When the pre-wash tank is full, the water will shut off. With the machine's tanks full, turn the machine power switch to the run position. The tank heaters begin to heat the pre-wash, wash, and rinse water. Do not attempt to wash any dishware until water in the tanks has reached proper operating temperatures. Check your detergent levels to make sure you have an adequate supply in the detergent dispensers. On most automatic detergent dispensers, an alarm sounds if the correct amount of detergent is not being dispensed. If an alarm sounds, check your detergent supply. Always remember to follow the instructions provided by your detergent supplier. To start the machine, press the black conveyor start switch located at either end of the machine. This starts the conveyors and the pumps. You are now ready to load wear into the FT-800 and begin the dishwashing operation. Loading the FT dish machine is one of the most important factors in cleaning dishware properly. Let's take a few minutes to review proper loading and unloading procedures. A separate scrapping operation should remove excess food soil from the dishes and glassware before washing them. 
When loading dishes and glassware, load similar items together. This speeds up the unloading process and lets the whole team operate faster. Load plates, saucers, trays, and similar items on the conveyor in an inclined position. Load bowls onto the conveyor upside down so they do not collect water in the wash and rinse cycles. Cups and glasses should be washed in racks. Do not stack dishes into the indexes. This prevents the flow of water from properly washing the dishes. You should pre-soak silverware for best cleaning results. Then the silverware is washed in silverware baskets or a flat bottom dish rack. When loading large trays and sheet pans, insert them in the belt at an angle. Do not lay trays flat on the conveyor. This causes excess water and detergent consumption. When loading large items such as pots, pans, and trays, first check to make sure that they will easily fit through the machine openings. Do not wash them in the FP800 unless they will easily fit. Now let's take a look at the FP800 operation from the discharge end. When you are unloading wares from the FP800, you must work quickly to keep the whole team operation moving. Any items left on the conveyor will strike the conveyor trip assembly and stop the pumps and conveyors. Removing the object automatically restarts the conveyor and pumps. Stack similar items together. Check with your supervisor for specific instructions about stacking and storing procedures for your operation. Several times a day, you will need to stop the FT-800 to check the strainers and baskets for excess waste. Remove strainer pans and baskets, empty and rinse them off before putting them back in place. Then resume your wear washing operation. The FT dish machine should be thoroughly cleaned at the end of each meal period, and it must be cleaned at the end of each day. When all wares are out of the machine, turn off the conveyor and the main power switch. Then open all the machine access doors. Inspect the wash and rinse arms in each compartment for nozzle obstructions. This includes the pre-wash flush arm, the pre-wash arm, the power wash arms, and the power rinse arms. To remove any nozzle obstructions, use a toothpick or straightened paper clip to poke the object back into the arm. Then remove the rubber end caps from the wash and rinse arms. After the end caps have been removed, close the machine's access doors, turn the power switch to on, and press the black conveyor start switch to start the machine's wash and rinse pumps. Run the pumps for 10 to 15 seconds, then turn off the power. This flushes all loose debris from the wash and rinse arms into the dish machine's compartments. Make sure you replace the rubber end caps. Periodically after heavy food soil operations, pre-wash, wash, and rinse arm should be removed for inspection and cleaning. Check your operator's manual for detailed instructions on removing wash and rinse arms. Push the power switch to off and open all access doors. Then lift the drain levers in all three tanks. While the tanks are draining, remove the curtain. Remove the strainer pans and baskets when the tanks have drained completely. Empty the contents of the strainers into a trash receptacle. Scrub all the removed items in a sink. Then clean the dishwasher interior. Use a hose and a scrub brush to thoroughly clean and flush the interior surfaces. Replace all the clean strainer pans and baskets. Allow the curtains to air dry at the end of the day before installing them back into the machine. Keep the machine doors open to allow the interior to air out and dry. Warning, disconnect electrical power supply and place a tag at the disconnect switch indicating that you are working on the circuit before performing any maintenance procedure. The FT dish machine requires very little regular maintenance. Speed reducer lubricant should be checked monthly. Remove the gear case plug and check the level of lubricant. The oil should be level with the bottom of the plug hole. 
If the oil is below this level, fill it to the proper level from the container marked lubricant for dishwasher speed reducer, supplied with the dishwasher. Periodically inspect the drive chain and lubricate it as required with oil dag supplied with your machine. And every four months, the conveyor sprocket bearings require lubrication. They are located at the load and unload ends of the machine. Grease fittings, one at each of the four bearings, and a grease gun are supplied with your machine to lubricate these bearings. A list of acceptable lubricants and each of the lubricants used for the FT-800 are available from your local Hobart office. This concludes operator training for the Hobart FT-800 dish machine. Always refer to your instruction manual for additional information on the use or operation of the machine, cleaning or troubleshooting procedures, or contact your local Hobart office. Thank <laughs> you.